How many Gojira do we know about that exist within the MonsterVerse, and what happened to them? Well today, let's attempt to identify every member of the Gojira species, and their ultimate fate. For eons, Godzilla has acted as the protector of nature and the paragon of balance within the forces of the Earth. He has been worshipped as a god and feared for his titanic size, but we know that this is just one of many Gojira species that once existed in the distant past. Godzilla is the last of his kind, but for the first majority of Godzilla's life, he was not alone, and he had other Gojira roaming the planet around him. So how many of these other Gojira do we actually know about, and what happened to them? In the MonsterVerse, we actually only know of three Gojira by name, though we know that there were more at one point in time. Lots more. The first, of course, is Godzilla himself, who has spent the last several million years continually growing in power in order to become the most powerful Gojira to have ever lived. Godzilla has been saturating himself with the power of several atomic bombs and the latent radioactive nature of the catacombs within the Hollow Earth through which he travels. This means that he is not an accurate example of what the power of a Gojira may have looked like. The King of the Monsters Godzilla is the most powerful member of the Gojira species that we currently know about by far. He is so far and away beyond the power levels of the other members of his species that he's almost something else entirely now. But what about the other members? Well, another Gojira we know of that is quite famous was called Dagon. Dagon is perhaps one of the last Gojira that we know by name, and throughout Dagon's life, he was worshipped as a benevolent sea god, several eastern cultures looking to him for protection, including Japan and the regions of the Philippines. The Japanese in particular referred to Dagon as Raijin the Lightning God, and this implies that he has similar weather manipulation abilities that Godzilla has as well. We know that the Gojira are conduits of immense power, and in several cases, we actually see lightning forming around Godzilla. This tells us that through his immense power, he is affecting the electromagnetic fields of the atmosphere that surrounds him, and is inadvertently creating lightning in some scenarios. The fact that the Japanese regarded Dagon as a lightning god seems to indicate that he did the same thing. Dagon, though, was described as being far more calm than Godzilla is, more of a benevolent protector of humanity than Godzilla, who is a protector of the entire planet and could care less about the fate of humanity. Dagon was also a lot smaller than the current Godzilla that we know of right now. Unfortunately, the benevolent god Dagon met his end at the hand of the Muto Prime, and serves as a cautionary tale for the impact that the Mutos could have on Godzilla if he was not careful. The Mutos are known as the Gojira Killers, and are known for infesting their larvae into the bodies of weakened Gojira, and from here, the eggs would gestate until eventually hatching, killing the Gojira and giving way to more Mutos in the process, as the infant Mutos fed off of the radioactive power within the Gojira. Even if Godzilla was not outright killed by the Mutos, if they successfully impregnated him, he would eventually die, and Dagon was an example of this, escaping death at the hands of Muto Prime for a period of time but eventually succumbing to his injuries. In life, Dagon was far more peaceful and tolerant of humans, and several cultures refer to him as a benevolent and a protective god, whereas Godzilla himself is viewed by similar cultures as a demon or a curse. Godzilla doesn't particularly care for humanity one way or another, although he has no issue with them outright. Godzilla simply seeks to protect the balance of nature, and so far, humans are not a threat to this system, so Godzilla doesn't have any positive nor negative feelings on humanity. After Dagon died though, humans of this region lost their protector, and the sad truth is that they never actually learned what happened to their savior, only that he engaged in a battle with the Muto before retreating into the ocean, never to return again. Dagon, however, is not the only Gojira that we know of, and we actually can point to one more that we know by name. We are of course talking about the legend of the Zos Lahawa, and although we haven't officially met this Gojira in person yet, we do see a reference to him in the official concept art booklet from Godzilla vs. Kong. This art collection displays a mural showcasing a flying Gojira, and we believe that this is in reference to the Iwa legend of the Zos Lahawa otherwise known as the Gojira who was driven wicked. Even if this flying Gojira is not specifically the Zlahawa, it is evidence of another Gojira in this age who is not only able to use the same atomic breath power as Godzilla, but appears to also have developed wings. Regardless of whether or not this is eventually confirmed to be the Zlahawa, 
it is important to call attention to this Gojira as well. We haven't officially seen the Zlahawa, but according to legend, this beast was so mighty that he called for the unification of the Titanus Kong and the Titanus Gojira to stop him, combining forces in a rare show of battle. After the Iwa tell of him eating a star, the Zlahawa was driven wicked and lost his sanity, giving him powers and abilities that no other Gojira had ever seen. In unleashing him on an unimpeded rampage across both the surface of the world and the depths of the Hollow Earth. Once the two factions were able to unite, they banished the Zlohala to a pit within the deep Hollow Earth. This seems to imply that the Zlohala could still be alive, and we believe we've found which adaptation of Godzilla he's going to take on. But for more of that, be sure to check out our full video on the Zlahawa. In the extended material, there are several other examples of remaining Gojira, including several offspring that Godzilla himself sired. Right now in the MonsterVerse though, we've only seen the skeleton of Dagon and the cave paintings and stories of the Zlahawa. So while it's entirely likely that one day these new Gojira will make their way into the MonsterVerse, they have yet to appear. There is one more honorable mention though that we'd like to bring up even though he's not technically an organic Gojira, and that is the false Mechagodzilla. While Mechagodzilla isn't a Gojira in the traditional sense, he was modeled by Apex as a synthetic rival that could hopefully challenge the power of the Titans. And so far, it's been the most successful human attempt to ward off the Titans of Earth. But while he was modeled as a counter to Godzilla in Mechagodzilla, we all obviously know he was controlled by the very spirit of King Ghidorah, making him even more of a false king than he ever was before. And finally, we would like to mention Titanus Shimo, who, according to various leaks for the new empire, is an offshoot and could be related to the Titanus Gojira, and is a distant cousin or relative of sorts of the Gojira species. Although of course right now this is simply a rumor, but what is clear is that Godzilla and Shimo do have some organic similarities. Unfortunately at this point in time though, we only have the official names of three members of the Gojira species. Godzilla himself, the king of the monsters, Dagon, the peaceful lightning god, and the Zla Hawa, the wicked Gojira that forced the Kong and the Gojira to unite against his power. And as a small little side note, we'd also like to mention Titanus Doug. But anyway my friends, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on all the named Gojira species that we see in the MonsterVerse? Do you think that there could be more Gojira out there in hiding? Or is Godzilla truly the last of his species? And which of the three Gojira is your ultimate favorite? Thank you so much as always for stopping by the channel today my friends. Hit that subscribe button and I hope you're having an amazing one.